let's talk about uh, Guy Lafleur. He shoots, he scores. He's suing uh, the police in Quebec for two million dollars. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Frank Dangle. story at all? A little bit. I mean, just give a little bit of background. Guy Lafleur, one of the greatest players in the history of the National Hockey League. Uh, the flower, beautiful skater, wonderful uh, winger. Just human being. Wonderful human being. Loved the way that he skated when he came down the wing there with his hair flowing in the background. Just a beautiful, beautiful hockey player. Had an interesting career with Montreal and the New York Rangers. Still a very, very prominent athlete. And you saw what happened during the funeral of John Beliveau and how much it affected Guy Lafleur. So, Frank, pick it up. Well, uh, you know, he's uh, still a very uh, much in the public eye. Uh, the favorite son of uh, Quebec, the extreme, the prodigal son of uh, Montreal, and uh, you know uh, he's quite upset of the way he got treated uh, when he got uh, charged, and that w that charge was overturned after in the appeal court on uh, what happened with his son. Uh, did you follow any of this, Bill, when uh, this was going on? I, I didn't. I just remember the the son was involved, and I didn't. I can't say I followed it closely. I'm fascinated to hear. I can't add anything to it. I, I, I don't think I've ever read that a hockey player uh, sued the police. It, it, we can Google that. Uh, has that ever happened? We'll go check on that one, okay? I mean, whatever, it, this, is, this is a very unique situation we're talking about. Unprecedented. Again, because of what you just said, this guy is revered, unlike few others, in, in certainly uh, in Quebec, Montreal. Again, not that far removed, maybe even on the same plane as Jean Beliveau. No chance. No chance. Okay, why not? Checkered career, in terms of what on the ice, in off the ice, in terms of his off ice uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would, you I would, if you uh, get away with uh, that, Bill Waters, uh, that you can John uh, was probably the most stop sign through the windshield, popular, uh, and most, and, and he was an incredible ambassador. Because you you're drunk yep. driving, Guy Lafleur has done a few things that John Belleville would never, and I'm only saying that out of respect for John Belleville. Guy Lafleur is at a level where you guys think, but he's no Jean Belleville. That's all. I, I, I would say on the level of uh, John Bellabo would be like a, a Perry Como and Guy Lafleur, uh, 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 um, I would say an Elvis Presley. <laughs> I mean, much more radical, but both of them had uh, incredible appeal to the fans in uh, Montreal, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and uh, incredible abilities. Yeah, no, no argument there. And, and it's and it's it's uh, actually. Uh, Incredible in Montreal and Toronto how hockey, hockey players never seem to fade away from uh, popularity. They still get standing ovations. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been at uh, the ACC uh, uh, or, or in, in the great Maple Leaf Gardens when uh, heroes of the past would come in and, and they would still get a standing ovation. It's incredible. And so they should. At least, you know, Montreal is always paid uh, great respect to its former heroes. They've always been welcomed there. It's only in the last few years, I don't know, since Harold Ballard's passed or maybe a little after that, that the, the Maple Leaf organization has reached back into its past and has shown these players the respect they deserve. But that's, that's my, the, the, the point I'm trying to make, and I don't know if you guys are seeing it coming full circle, he was quite popular, still is very popular, and uh, the police still charged them with, with, uh, not really trying to get to the bottom of it, and and I, I imagine it was very embarrassing for him. And, what and, did they uh, charge I, him with, I, Frank? Sorry. Pardon me. What did they charge Lafleur with? I I, I I I don't know if it was obstruction of uh, justice. Obstruction. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was trying to protect his I, son. I think the allegation, uh, or, or or for the charge was that he did not uh, share what he was supposed to share about some information that had to do with a hotel room with his son and where yes. his whereabouts. I'm certain, yeah, I know the story now. Yep. Yep. And, 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 uh, and uh, he sincerely said that uh, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. but either way, they, they, they charged them and they, they dragged them and uh, uh, he, uh, he's suing them for two million bucks and uh, uh, some legal experts believe that uh, he has a very good case. The question would be is, does he want his name clear? Does he want justice? Does he want money? Why is there a figure like that? all of the above. Okay. Because I, I wouldn't think, I think the thing that he wants more than anything is for, as an apology, to say that they're wrong. He was uh, it's wrong. an expensive apology. It's a $2 million apology. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how they come up with these figures. 
2 million, 10 million, whatever it is, they put a price tag on something that was apparently, in his opinion, something that he was wronged. Well, he, he was wronged if it's true that he told the truth and, uh, and he was charged anyways. And, and uh, he, you know, had this charge against him, and it cost him, I'm sure, an exuberant amount of money to defend himself and get it. And uh, he had it overturned in the Court of Appeal. In your opinion, if the, if the police make the charge, they go ahead with the court case, then they find out he's not wrong, and they drop the charges. Are they still wrong for going ahead and pursuing the charge? Um, you know what, that's a, a great question. And also, I don't know what the, the laws are in Quebec. In some places, uh, you can't sue... Uh, uh, the the crown or the district attorney's office or, or the police for wrongdoing and uh, you know that's gone that's gone on. I mean, there's there's a case that I read where a, a, a young man uh, spent seven uh, months in jail. Uh, uh, it was here in Toronto, I believe, uh, of Dufferin Mall, where it was alleged that he pushed a, a, a lady in her uh, 80s down the escalator, when in fact uh, the um, tape which was in the hands of the crown showed uh, that he did not push her as she was walking by he 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 gestured her to go ahead in front of him and just by bad luck she bumped into his hand and she tripped down the stairs now the crown had that evidence in their hands they did not show that 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 would have you know definitely exonerated uh, uh, this young man uh, and he went out to spend seven days seven months in jail so you know, like, what does he do now? Does he sue them? Uh, there was total bogus on the part. I mean, the crown doesn't deserve to be a crown, if that's the case. If there's, if that's exactly what transpired. But uh, you know, the, the, sometimes there's just law, no justice. So you know, like I just bring out the point about Reuben Hurricane Carter. He was charged with murder, and uh, spent a good deal of his life in jail. Then he was eventually released. Well, it was apparently a he was. I'm sorry? It was a bogus charge. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about there. So with a guy like Reuben Hurricane Carter, when he left, he chose... The Canadians who freed him, actually. It was, yeah. Uh, uh, some young Canadians who, who really wanted to... Uh, uh, who had seen his uh, story and, and fought and, and got him freed. And he, and he spent you know, much of his life after being in prison here in Toronto just trying to right the wrongs of... Anybody who was charged and, and believed they were charged incorrectly. I was very thankful to the Canadians and, and, and Canada for uh, believing in him uh, because nobody did in the States or he would have rotted in jail. I mean, his story is very close to the story of uh, Le Miserable where, you know, they, they just chased him and, uh, throughout his life until they caught him. And, you know, there was a guy uh, who believed he was a guilty person. He didn't like him. And... Uh, and had him thrown in jail. And I think sometimes uh, the the good guys forget that they're the good guys, and they're so um, mesmerized and hypnotized on being good guys, they'll do whatever it takes to stay being good guys, that they break the rules. And uh, they break the rules and, and put innocent people in jail. But now, you know, with the technology that the criminal uh, court system has where there's, DNA, uh, you know, DNA, uh, which it's very, you know, it's better than fingerprints, uh, and it, it, it's very difficult to put someone in someone in jail without the proper proof. Mm -hmm. 